Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor and you can also find my blogs on gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So today for the market buzz, I want to cover off the oil market. Um, not so much the market itself, but just the oil and gas stocks within the market. And there's a couple of things. One is um, I like to look at the weekly charts, but now we've had a kind of a six week pullback. And so there's a couple of tools we can use on the weekly charts to help with that. But sometimes it also helps to go down into the daily or, or even sub daily uh, to try and look for entries if if there's some names you want to start to pick up there. So that's what I want to cover off today, and we're going to focus in on that, um, just how I analyze the oil and gas stock. So again, I, I think the backdrop for oil and gas is pretty good here. So um, I, I want crude to hold up a lot. I really don't want it to break down anymore from here, and I it just recently bounced off support. This is um, being recorded on Tuesday, and Tuesday morning it's kind of been bouncing. So um, anyway, that's what we're going to cover off today. Let me jump into the charts. And so what I want to start with is just a simple picture of um, a five-year weekly chart. I'm looking at ConocoPhillips here. And the point I want to make on ConocoPhillips is here's the scooter ranking, and you can see that it can go up into the positive territory for a year, and then it kind of went out of favor. And recently, it's been up in positive territory and pulled back. Now, I have a whole bunch of, of oil and gas charts in here. The list is quite long. But the point is, um, some of the different things I want to look at. So first of all, the scooter ranking tells me, compared to all the other large cap stocks, um, how is ConocoPhillips performing? And right now it's just barely better than half of them. It's at 55%, 56%. So, so that's not great. Now, ConocoPhillips wasn't one of the, I'll call it key movers off of the lows. Um, some of the other charts like Fang and Callum Petroleums and that kind of things did, did better. Um, but the whole idea is what are we looking for here? So very quickly, across all industry groups and everything, the scooter ranking just says large cap stocks. How's this stock doing? It's been up in the top half. Well, that's okay. It's been up in the top half here. Um, I put the blue line on this indicator around 75 to say if it's above 75, that's pretty good. Now, looking at relative strength, ConocoPhillips hasn't really outperformed the S&P 500 um, since the beginning of the year, February. And since then, it's kind of been flat. It's been up and down. Um, right now, we have the full stochastic pointing down. And on a weekly chart, we want the full stochastic to hold around 50%. So back in this big bull market, that's kind of what we saw. So we're at the level. We're looking for a bounce here on the stock. We can also see... Um, so the full stochastic, again, the idea behind it is it tells you where the stock is within the range of the previous 14 weeks. So if we just... Um, zoomed in, um, go down here to whatever, two months, that's going to give us, uh, I guess that's only eight weeks, why don't we go for five months? Um, but the idea being we want to know where the stock is in its price action compared to the last 14 weeks. So here's five weeks, 10 weeks, 14 weeks. So we're sitting in the... Um, this is the period we're comparing to, so we can see there was way up here, way down here, and this full stochastic says we're roughly halfway in between the middle of that. It also has a smoothing factor of, of the last three weeks, so it will average the data because um, otherwise it jerks up and down quite quickly. So the idea being um, when a stock starts to improve over its um, previous period. So in this case, it's downtrending and all of a sudden it starts to turn up. And then you finally get your full stochastic cross. And then it was running higher here for almost two months where the full... So what what is that saying? So that's telling us that the stock is moving up within the period of the prior 14 weeks and, and moving up. Now you can do this on a daily chart, a five-minute chart, a 60-minute chart, a, a monthly, whatever you want. And you can also change uh, how many week look back you have. So you could do a five week, you could do a nine week, you could do whatever you want. Um, the default is 14. So 
what we're looking for here is you can see a nice big run up full stochastic starts to fall out of the 80 percent level and what does that mean that means that the stock is no longer in the top 20 percent of the last 14 weeks so in this case here's six weeks 10 weeks 14 weeks so as it starts to fall below here it's no longer in the 20 percent of the range from 47 to 63 it's falling down well now we're about halfway and again in bull markets we'd like to see it kind of hold in the halfway period in this range that's not a, a hard and fast rule we're going to find some charts today that have pulled all the way back down into the bottom 20 percent but we want to use the full stochastic as perhaps an indicator um, when it's starting to turn back up that we'd like to get back on board so despite the volatility of oil over the last two weeks the stock this stock has basically held in so here's the close five weeks ago close five four weeks three weeks two weeks and the current close um, so as we're looking at that period what is this telling us every week somebody steps in to buy this stock and hold it at this level so that's pretty good now volume has been a little bit below average but it doesn't quite get the same sort of thrust uh, that amc or or uh, GameStop might have gotten um, and then our PPO is our momentum indicator and what we want to look at there is just is momentum up or down um, and I like it when big long-term momentum trends have broken so that's kind of how we're going to view it now I'm just going to click back on the weekly five-year setup here so again our our um, relative strength compared to our peers we're only outperforming about 50 percent of them compared to just the s p 500 which is a similar group um, <clears throat> what this chart here doesn't tell us is that recently it, it started to outperform and got up to better than 90 percent of its peers uh, when we compare that you know that's a, a helpful piece of information because here the the relative strength line isn't anywhere near what it was two years ago so we would come to the conclusion that the stock is still not behaving very well but in fact it's been outperforming for the last five or six months so i like the scooter ranking to help me with that the full stochastic just looking back in history here you can see that if you can get these strong long periods of uh staying above the 50 percent level or roughly the 50 percent level this was a pretty nice trend to be on for more than a year and then at the end of the year it started to break down and it never did really kind of gain um, strength again until we got the uh, the turn in the market in the bottom of november here when everything started to break out now one of george lane's favorite trades the uh, the named founder of of the stochastic system and he was involved with larry williams and others when when they came up with the the full stochastics so what they did was um what what george lane liked to look for was you have a low and then you make a higher low here even though price made a lower low and the idea being you're smoothing this out over a three-week period and basically when you start to get this higher low in your full stochastic meaning the price didn't close down there it closed up higher um, that that's a really big move so this was an important signal with this higher low coming out of here while price had made a lower low that things were improving and we also saw that on the ppo where we talk about divergence in this case the divergence from um, the march lows to the October lows wasn't really there but what we see here is the stock was basically pulling back pulling back pulling back and then it starts to turn higher quickly we like that so so you don't see the divergence from the lows here that we would normally see it but you do see it on this little shorter time frame on the full stochastic so that's a nice signal that we want to watch for now the other thing that i like to watch for is a trend break in momentum and i like it when i can draw a downtrend uh, across a momentum line we could do the same thing here and it starts to break out so um and i'm probably one of the few people who uses that as an indication now 
Um, you can also try to use the trend line the other direction. Okay, so we take this trend line here, and we're still holding up and we're a long way above it, but the stock can oscillate up here at a strong level for a long period of time. Um, I like to use it more for finding this breakout point, but when I do see these PPO momentum trends start to change, that would influence my decision. I don't usually like to hold past that. And the idea being once a stock has had strong momentum and, and that strong momentum is starting to break, I, I want to make sure that I'm also aware of the trend change. Um, and so that would help get me out of the stock in a timely basis. And so here we have a, a trend line on relative strength compared to the S&P 500 and it started to break. All of these could have been sell signals and would have been pretty good, right? If you'd have taken this sell signal, that was okay. Um, just drawing it off this trend line. So all of these uh, clues can help. And again, we could have drawn one in here, um, something like this. It just depends on how aggressive you want your trading to be. So for me, I'm trying to find longer trends. I want to find... Um, bigger patterns that that I can ride for a while. I'm not really a very um, accomplished day trader, not trying to um, trade that often. So here is your 10-week moving average, and we're sitting just below it, and the stock has consolidated nicely. Most of the uptrends occur when you're back above the 10-week moving average, and you can say that commonly about most stocks, but as you can see, you're below the 10 week, you're above the 10 week, you're below the 10 week. Here you've been above, there was a brief dip below, a brief dip below, now we've been below. The question is, can we get back up above? And if we don't, I think that probably gives us more um, data that, that the overall oil market isn't going up anymore. Anyway, I still think the oil stocks have room to run. So this is how I'd analyze it on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. Then I could also just go grab a stock. And in this case, we're going to use ConocoPhillips because that's the chart we had before. And I've got some um, example systems set up here. So this is on a daily chart. And what, what you'll notice here is I've got a few things going on. I have a Keltner band in green here. And the idea behind the Keltner band is it's more like a, a channel of support and resistance. You, you can see we deeply, briefly dipped below um, my Keltner band here in April, and then we turned and reversed. And as we got back above, we ran up there, we started to break down through it. Um, your first sell signal would be getting all the way through to the other side. And in this case, now we'd be looking for a breakout back to the upside if you were to just use something simple like the, the Keltner band. I like to marry it with things like this, that I can draw a trend line um, in momentum across prior highs. And as the stock starts to turn back up, that would get me more interested. And so I'll show you some of those. A good time frame to think about for a momentum indicator Typically, three to four months um, is kind of how much I'd like as a minimum for the stock to kind of relax. Um, and then if the momentum trend can turn back up, that would be better. <clears throat> when we go look at ConocoPhillips, um, just save this here. When we go look at ConocoPhillips on a weekly basis again, what we see is the PPO trend line here is declining since March. And so even though price made a higher high, whoops, sorry, let me just do this, a higher high in um, June, it made a lower high in momentum. So that's what we would call divergence. Now, if the stock can just stay up here above 2.5% and... and um, 2% or 2.5%, that's just a really good line that when the stock is performing up there, you probably want to stay long. So if we just drew some, some markers in here of when, when the PPO is above 2%, why don't I just do it this way, just drag it right over to the edge and put it on here. <clears throat> and 
you can just see when the stock is above that level, it's worth owning. And when it's not above that level, it's probably been more difficult to hold. Um, even this reset at zero, which is one of the things we commonly talk about for the PPO momentum, is it comes down, it resets at zero, and then it starts to work its way higher. And when it does that, you'd like to be on board. So what would be an entry signal? Well, either just uh, PPO breaking that downtrend line that I mentioned, or um, if the stock PPO can start to turn back above zero, that's not a bad entry, right? We'd like that. <clears throat> and conversely, if it starts to drop uh, down below that 2% level, we probably want out after a long run. Now you can decide if you want to wait that long or or if you want to look for other clues and those other clues again would be <clears throat> relative strength compared to the s p 500 starting to break or um, even if you just did a a flat level and just said if we're starting to hit new three-month lows in relative strength i probably want out so different ways to use your indicators to help you find your your entry and your exits Again, these are longer time frames. There's lots of people who want to um, trade 60-minute charts or daily charts. I, I fully get that. I like catching these big trends. And again, um, if this is just a pullback and we're about to head higher, we kind of want the PPO to stay up above here. When it starts to get too weak, we really need to be aware of the potential for the stock to actually enter a long-term downtrend. And we probably want to exit. So um, I want to use those indicators, uh, these alternate indicators, to help me um, find support. So here's the PPO coming down around zero, briefly went below. And you can see this downtrend line, we're about to break it. I also have some MACD momentum indicators in here. Let me just turn on some legends a bit. And then um, what these do, this is just uh, longer time frame MACD. So my PPO is 12, 26, and 9, but this MACD 50 and 100 is a longer period. And what you can see all through this whole um, wave down, most of the time we've been negative here. Now, a really long period, so a 200 and 600 day uh, MACD histogram, is saying we're in very positive ground. If I open this chart up for a long time, just add a few years here. <clears throat> this histogram can give us an idea uh, of just the longer term period. So wh when you're in a big long term uptrend, this longer MACD will hold up. And when it starts to go below zero, then you probably want to think about whether or not you want to be long this anymore. And just by, you know, very simple, it was this long term MACD was very, um, was positive for almost a two and a half year period and that gives you a good idea of the time to ride that trend and then when that starts to fade you could actually just step back from it so that's one way to look at it the second is the 50 over the 100 period and that's going to be a little shorter time frame for trading and basically it's been staying negative and so the real question now is can it go positive right here as the stock is consolidated for five weeks, and are we going to start to turn or start to turn up on that? So let's go back to that shorter time frame. I'm just going to hit this button again over here, and then I'll just turn on the the legend to give a little bit more data. And here we have the fast stochastic, and I just find on a daily chart that's a little too fast to be helpful unless you're just looking for turning up from a, a minus tw or from a 20% level moving up. You'd like an entry. That's one there. Over here, you'd have been whipsawed quite a bit and it would have been uh, unprofitable trading. So all of these are different clues that you can use. So what do I want to do now that I've got um, the stock set up? So if if I'm to just go look, and I'm going to go grab a couple of charts out of here, but um, here's range resources, just to pick one. So the stock still has a full stochastic up in the top half. This is pretty nice. I kind of like that look. Um, 
stock was 250 went all the way to 17 dollars you can get by on that kind of return over a, a one and a half year period now it's pulling back a little bit does it have any more room to the upside and that's a good question okay we can see that even though oil's been very volatile this stock's held up pretty well and even just using my keltner band it would have been uh, a trade that stayed profitable so very little uh, movement down below my Keltner band just for a sell signal. Now my PPO is kind of waning down here and what I want to watch for on this particular stock is just something that would start to break this downtrend in momentum. We saw this back here in April and that was a pretty good clue. And and so when you're on a daily chart you could use these shorter time frames for momentum to trade especially when the stock is in an uptrend. And I think for all of us that know Alexander Elder's method of trading, basically he's looking for a pullback. Uh, so a stock is uptrending, it pulls back, he buys it, it takes off, it gets to the top of the band, he sells it, waits for his entry. And he tries to use stocks that have wide ranging price movements. So um, lots of volatility, and on a big pullback, he'd be a buyer. And then as it breaks back out again to the top side, he'd ride it maybe 10 days, might be two weeks, uh, sorry, uh, two months. And as it starts to take off, then he'd sell it as it gets back into the top of its channel. So um, different people can use these different approaches. But for me, what I want to watch for is all of these oil stocks starting to break these downtrends. Um, and hopefully... When you start to see the group move, and I thought last week we were going to start to see that, um, I was wrong. Um, so what we started to see on uh, two weeks ago, this stock uh, jumped up and then pulled back into this sideways channel and traded sideways through here. Um, on this particular candle, some of the charts actually started to jump out. That would be the... Uh, last trading day of July and then we had some more good price action on early August but still stocks haven't been able to break out of that range so when I go look um, and I've just got a shorter list of Canadian stocks that I have set up but you see the same sort of thing setting up here here's kind of a topping structure in the stock now my PPO is just getting down towards zero if it can start to turn up here that would be a setting I would like indicators and then if we just want to flip through, here's Baytex Energy. Um, this one's giving us a PPO, almost a PPO buy signal today. I particularly like when the PPO comes down, touches the signal line, pulls back away, and then in a short period of time, especially relative to this long period of time over a month, all of a sudden starts to give me the buy signal. It's like momentum is starting to, to catch on again. In this case, the fast stochastic is already up over the 50% level and wants to turn and burn. So the stock looks a little more stable to me here. Um, so in this case, I tried to buy the stock in here on this breakout, came back down, fell below the Keltner band, closed right back up against it, and then today has, has moved back higher as an example. So you're, you're trying to find... Um, a a trade that works um, while the stock is basing and in this case I probably should have waited for this little signal but sometimes you just get them where they turn straight up it's always a difficult trade that way so looking again here's cardinal energy and this one's broken its downtrend already we can see there's a big long um, downtrend on the PPO if that can start to turn higher this stock is behaving a lot better than the price of crude and looks like it wants to go higher full stochastic or fast stochastic is already at 80 percent so lots of reasons to like it it's broken above kind of this prior resistance layer and we had one big candle that broke above it and then it's been resetting since then now it seems to actually be working its way higher so that's much better I also like the fact that the PPO after being below zero is back above I do not want to let it to start roll over again here. That would be a big problem in my opinion. Um, mechanical energy, this chart just can't get any love, so it's staying um, very low. Here's Canadian Natural Resources. I've owned this one for a while. Um, but again, you've got this big downtrend. 
briefly touched, pulled back, now giving you a PPO buy signal. Stock is trying to break out above the prior three weeks. Um, and as it starts to turn up here, um, this Keltner band that I've got sitting here, um, when you when you pick your your range for your Keltner band or your width, what I just want to use is like a a band again for support or resistance. I'm not trying to actually pick a, a level, but if I use the same one on all the charts, it also gives me an idea of volatility. And this stock doesn't have near the volatility that we saw on some of the others. Anyway, so the the Keltner band actually. Um, looks a little bit different on each chart and the reason for that is because of the volatility of the stock. So what we see here is $42 is a pretty key level on this. If it was going to start to break out to the upside again we've already got our PPO buy signal. If price holds here into the close because the PPO is based on the last reading we're starting to get a break of the downtrend. Our fast stochastics already moving back above 80 and no real volume interest showing up in the last few weeks. This is on the Canadian side. So lots of selling up near the top and now it's been very, very quiet. So just using these simple tools, this is a stock that has been in a big uptrend um, and now we're looking at it from a different perspective. So if I go back and I just, um, I think CNQ is in here. Just looking to see where, there it is. Um, so here's CNQ on a weekly chart. You can see big uptrend, full stochastic, pulling back to around 50. Relative strength with the S&P 500. You can see it was declining for years. It's actually spent about a year and a half rising. It's at, recently it was at new one-year highs and it wouldn't take much to make new three-year highs. That's nice to see the stock start to behave better. Again, our PPO is sitting up around 5%. We can see that number over here on the left. And so the idea being is as this pulls back, you're trying to find an entry. So then you go to your daily chart. And on the daily chart, what do you want to see? Well, you'd like to see the stock come down, start to base. I want to see my momentum indicator start to turn up and at least some sort of a trend break there. You'll miss a few if you wait for the trend every time, but it also helps um, not get stopped out. So buying it here pulls back for a couple of days, just tries to take out a few lows and then starts to step on. So what what is actually going on here? So as people are selling, um, institutions are starting to buy it and they basically say, look, let's pick $40. If I could get it down near $40, I want to be a buyer or $41 and and they're trying to hold, uh, they're trying to build a position. They don't want the stock to start to run away on them either. So they don't mind this chop in here. It gives them time to build a position. And as the stock starts to turn back higher, they get more interested. Okay. So here's crew energy and it's still in its decline phase. PPO down near zero. So starting to look at a place you probably want to investigate and your full stochastic or fast stochastic in this case is starting to think about turning up at the 20 level. So perhaps this is the turn. But again, I want to see all these stocks start to do this together. Here's Synovus. Again, that long downtrend, brief turn up, pull back. Looks to me like it wants to start setting up here. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thanks, everybody. Have a great week and... As always, thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also see the recording on Stock Charts TV YouTube page. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.